around. Oh, okay, thank you. So we started. So last time we talked about the one on one. Mm -hmm. Yes. The I. That's why we call it sex one on one. Because the first sex is with ourselves, knowing who we are, what our likes are. But this week we're going to talk about 102. Mm -hmm. Where we're talking about two people. And before your mind goes into, oh, this ain't for me. I've been dumb. My, my, my closet's been closed for a long time. You got cobwebs. In fact, I don't even know where it is. You know, before we go there, I'm not talking about intercourse. You can take it there and that'll be 103. But I'm going to talk about people. Now, when you start to engage with other people, when you start conversing with other people, and the first people, how many people in this room have a partner or have had a partner or wasn't a partner, want a partner? If you want one, raise your hand. Okay, less than half the room. How many currently have a partner? I have a partner. Okay, we got another third of the room. How many people not interested, period, done, take me out? <laughs> Okay, that happened. Okay. <laughs> How many people have friends? Anybody got a friend? A friend, even one friend. Yeah. No friends. How many people got relatives still living? Okay, everybody. All right. Okay. So I'm going to focus on these relatives, these people that we have to engage with. Many of us are dealing with family members that we have stuff inside for. Oh, I'm going to go there. You got it in here. And it's showing up whether you believe it or not. Anybody want to share something? You have to give names and dates. <laughs> oh, shows up. Went to the, won't go to funeral. Here's one. I know, I know a family says someone's getting buried. I'm not going. I'm not going because I can't stand them people in my family. They all show up for the funeral, but you never hear from them outside of the funeral. But they come for the food and to put on the show. You know, oh man, oh yes, they were so good. I remember when. And they put on that show. And you decided that I ain't into that artificial stuff no more. So I'm not going. Anybody? Anybody felt like that? I'm not going. I'm not going to the wedding. I'm not going to funerals. I'm not going to the anniversary. I'm just not going. But pray tell, whose feelings are getting hurt? Yours. Yours. That's in your heart. Talking about the heart, damn. Yes. You're getting hurt. Your feelings are hurt. And if we are supposed to be about progress in this world. We don't come to the earth to regress, go backwards. We come here to progress, mm -hmm. to make the world better by doing something, saying something, being something, creating something, whether it's in an art or a child. That's what we're here for, to progress. And when we're harboring hard feelings inside, mentally, emotionally, those things only impact our health and our well-being. Anyone ever got a headache and they don't know where it came from? Mm -hmm. I don't get headaches. Why does my head hurt? I don't know. Stress. Say it again. Stress. Stress. And what are you stressing about? Nothing. <laughs> usually, usually it's about somebody. Yes. Somebody said something that aggravates you. Somebody did something to aggravate you. Tell the truth. Yeah. Yes. Right? And you have it here in your mind. It stays there. And whether you believe it or not, you say, I'm not thinking about that. I don't care about that. When you go try and take a sleep, when you try to go to bed, you're tossing and turning because your unconscious mind is still processing the hurt, still processing the pain. And believe it or not, some people have had heart attacks and strokes. Yep. Got so mad, so angry, so upset that it showed up 
for the phys what I call the physical manifestation. So what can we do as we try to improve our sex life? <laughs> our life. Open. Open. Be open to bridge the communication gap. And here's what you don't have to have. You don't have to have the other person's permission. We often say, well, if they say, oh, sorry, I'll say I'm sorry. If they want to talk, then I'll talk. If they don't want to talk, I'm not going to talk. Right? That's how it is. If they're not ready, I'm not ready. Okay? And let me tell you why that doesn't work. What do you think they're doing? Well, when she when she ready to apologize, then all right, I'll, I'll talk. I'll talk. <laughs> so the same thing you're doing is the same thing they're doing. And oftentimes we say we're Christ-like, you know. We say we're Christ-like, and I've just been meditating a little bit more. I ain't no minister. This is my ministry, but I'm no minister. And I distinctly remember two things that Jesus talked about. And I'm telling you, the church would be empty every Sunday if all the people in church did this. Does anybody remember the two things he said about people? He said, before you come to the altar. Go back. He, he, what did he say? Anybody? Nobody, nobody what? Go back and Before you go to the altar, before that means before you come to church, before you come, start the praise and yeah. worship. Yeah, you gotta, you're you supposed to do what? What stuff. are you supposed to do? He, he was clear. Jesus is a little foggy in his teaching sometimes, making all these parables and things, but yeah. on this he was clear. What did he say? Don't hold no for, I'm I don't know how we forget that. it. What did he say? I'm forgiveness. I know why. You clean your heart. Yeah. You need to go make peace. Make right. peace. Yes. Go to your brother. Yes. Peace. Yes. He yeah. said before, you, before come to you come to the altar, before you, come, before you go to church, before you yes. go to make see peace. God and talk and ask and beseech and want something, mm. he said, stop, go make peace. Before you come to the altar. Before. Yes, I'm telling you, church will be empty. Sure, we're, we're, church will be absolutely so empty. Yeah, yeah. If we were following true scripture, he said, uh-uh, don't you come up in here. Mm -mm. If you have something in your heart, Jesus. make peace. Mm -hmm. Repent before you come in. But we all, I'm going to my Sunday's church, you know, in there every single Sunday. Holding unforgiveness. And leaving with unforgiveness in your heart. Yeah. Carrying stuff in your heart. Second thing, he was pretty clear. I, you know, sometimes me and Jesus have some talks because I'm like, you sure? But there's one other thing he said. Seventy times seven. Forgive them. Forgive them. Seventy times seventy. Mm -hmm. That's a lot. I personally thought he should have removed some of the numbers off of this. <laughs> we good at seven, right? Does anybody even make it to seven? I don't know about you. I'm going to tell you, I don't even quite make it to seven myself. Much less 70 times 70. If we remember these two things, we would have better sex. How do you live with someone in your house, day after day, year after year, not at peace? How do you get into your bed, not at peace? Because you have something in your heart. Now, making peace doesn't mean, he didn't say forget, right? He didn't say, let him do it again. Let, he didn't say make him walk on you again. Didn't say make him hit you again, although he did say turn the other cheek. But <laughs> peace is inside of you. So even if I come to you and I say, look, I'm gonna call it quits. 
I'm not going to hold this against you anymore. And she says to me, I'm never going to forget. I'm not going to forgive you. That's it. Oh, shoot. I ain't got nothing to do with That's you. right. You're free. I have nothing <laughs> to That's do right. with you. That's right. You're free. <laughs> you have nothing to do with Amen. Me. That's it's right. my peace. That's, That's it. It's mm -hmm. my peace. It's your peace. But to lay down in your bed in the house of people that you're at war oh with. Oh, my God. Jesus. That's terrible. <laughs> Peace in 70 times 70. Yes. And it's an inner peace. Why do I bring this up? Because we're trying to build a character for relationships. Because as any good therapist knows, they always want to ask you about your past. What happened in the past? <laughs> right? Anybody ever did therapy? I've gone like three times. Oh, uh, yeah. They always want to know they your want business. That, what, yes. mean, what happened? What happened? When you, went, happened? On, when you went on vacation? And the How reason did you... they ask that yeah. question oh. <laughs> is because it's showing up in the present. You're mad. You're angry. You're stressed. You're crying all the time. You're, your yeah. stomach hurts, headache, back pain. I have, I call it the three places that our pain shows up in our head, our heart, and our spine, four, mm -hmm. and stomach. Mm -hmm. Sometimes if you've ever been upset and angry, your stomach starts growling oh, and yeah. your mouth. Other mm -hmm. people start getting chest pain, feeling like they're having a heart attack. Mm -hmm. Some people start getting, oh, my sciatica is acting up again. No, you're going to forgive somebody somewhere. Something's going on with you. You're holding on to something. It shows up in your body. Most doctors don't investigate this, but I've seen in 30 years in this business that yes, there are definitely physical ailments that we have, but if we backtrack some of them, we will find unforgiveness. Mm -hmm. We will find pain. We'll find things that we're holding on mm -hmm. to. In fact, the worst ones are people done dead and gone. My God. Yeah. I mean, dead and gone. Mm -hmm. That's bad, right? And we still got it. She gone, but I remember what she did to me. <laughs> and we'll tell anybody who wants to listen. <laughs> and you be like, why don't you go tell about it? Oh my gosh. Oh, she right did. Now. I'm sorry. <laughs> so let me get this straight. They're dead. <laughs> <laughs> you alive. Why are you back there? <laughs> and you having a conversation about it? Even better yet. Oh, oh People been married. <laughs> Divorced. 20 years. Yeah. They done moved to another state. <clears throat> and you be sitting there playing some spades. You know that man had the audacity. And he <laughs> got married. And he, what, he, he giving her all that money now. I couldn't get a penny out of him. <laughs> Who? You talking about your ex-husband? <laughs> the one you were married to 20 years ago? Girl. Oh. Gentlemen, get a life. Let it go. Because it's occupying your ability and preventing you from creating new relationships and being open for friendship, partnership, whether emotional or sexual. Even just going to, ain't going nowhere because, you know, they might leave you there. Somebody left you someplace one time. I ain't going ever again. You know, they took me to that restaurant. They knew I was a vegan and they took me up to that steak restaurant. I'm not going out with nobody ever again. What? No, seriously. This is, this is honest. This is health. You may not think of it as health, but it really is. Reflect on your life. How much pain and hurt and anger are you carrying? And if you could physically see it, you'd be walking around like this. Mm -hmm because it's on your back. Baggage. Mm. Just, just something to reflect it. on. Because as we try Release to re get into new relationships, and I'm, this class, I'm glad you're here because it tells me you're in a place because people who are close don't show up to um, sponsorships like this. They don't come out, they don't go walking, they don't engage in these wonderful programs. So many seniors that I work with stay home. Mm -hmm. They don't want to go anywhere. I know you have friends like that. Mm -hmm. And they don't want to go anywhere because they're closed. Mm -hmm. They're not active. And if you sit with them and have a conversation and you follow it back, 
-hmm. It has to do with something mm -hmm. that they're holding on to. Yes. Even if you're holding on to the past, when I, I used to have a lot of money, I used to have a car, I used to be able to, whatever that thing was, mm -hmm. you gotta forgive that out too. Yeah. You're not that anymore. So let's talk about engagement. All right, so we've identified the I. We've now done, we said, I ain't got nothing. I got nothing, I'm holding on to my body, I'm free. I have no unforgiveness in me. By the way, it's a daily affair because the person will cut you off on the highway. Ooh. You know? <laughs> I'm not driving anymore at six o'clock in the evening because every time I drive at six o'clock, somebody tries to cut me off. Okay? You may want to let that go, you know? Because now you cut off any events that happens at six o'clock, you're not going to go because someone cut you off. How about take an Uber? How about team up with somebody else who's, who, don't, who doesn't have a problem with 6 o'clock? Right? But then you have to be open. A taxi right? or a lift. A taxi. Uh, you got to be open. So as we try to create the one-on-two, on two, we have to be open to changing our life. So the next word, what do I need to change? That's scary. Get a divorce. <laughs> maybe, maybe you have that conversation and you said, hey babe, you know, you and I have been rocking around for 40 years, you've been sleeping in the other bed for about 20 years now, and I really need a partner in my bed and going and doing things with me like we used to do. And they're like, eh, that was then, I'm, I like my couch, I won't go nowhere. That may not be what the eye you need. So divorce may be that. Yeah. Or you agree to a new type of relationship. You know, a new partnership, a new type of partnership. But the point is, what do I need to change? Mm -hmm. Am I that person who don't want to do anything? Mm. Am I that person that has a mean face mm -hmm. all the time when they show up? Mm -hmm. Am I that person who's the naysayer? No, I won't do that. I won't do that. I won't do that. Am I the? Am I boring? Self-examination. And the only word is boring. You know what boring is? Mm. Lack of imagination. Mm. Imagination is something that you have to foster and and develop. You have to be creative. But in order to develop an imagination, you have to be open to new things but sometimes they don't they're not open they are just liars oh there you go lying am i a liar do i say are you the person who's, yeah i'll go i'll go i'll go and then when it's time to go oh, um, oh wow i'm not feeling well i have a headache um uh, the grandbabies are coming over uh That's i'd excuses. like to go are you that person who's always gung-ho and then at the last minute, you cancel on people. You know, um, there, there was a couple in church, male and female, ready to get married, and she wanted to have sex before getting married. He said, oh, we are Christian. You know, let's wait after we get married. And then the night of the marriage, he cannot function. Hey, she bought a lemon. Yeah, she did. <laughs> Man, that happened. <laughs> That's why you didn't want to have sex. Yeah. There was nothing going on. Two weeks, there was nothing going on. And after she was, uh, 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 she's been, you know, waiting and waiting and waiting, everything was going on. And the wedding was in, in the church. Uh, uh, oh, in the church? Uh -huh. Yeah, in the church. And then... <laughs> In the morning, the lady came to me, I have to get a divorce. And I'm like, why? Say, she had to get a divorce because he cannot function. But here's wow. the thing, ladies. And he was lying the whole time, so, saying we are Christian. Okay, but wait. But guess what? All right, let's talk about specificity. Why you have to start with the I. If you like sex, and if you want to have sex in your relationship, you have to make it clear 
I'm a sexual being. I like having sex. I want to engage on a regular basis. Yep. Mm -hmm. Can you have sex? Communication. Yeah. You, that, that's a conversation. Yeah, that's right. You, you have to ask the question. Yep. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know we're at a place where we're told, ladies, don't do that. Men, don't mm -hmm. do that. You know. You, or, and if you are physically unable to have or engage in sexual intercourse, have you attempted to use other supports to help you? Have you seen a physician about it? But that's a conversation you should be having before you buy the car. <laughs> okay? If you're buying the car and you don't open the door and look under the hood, <laughs> you may be able to take it for a test drive. <clears throat> um, you know, it's on you. That's a conversation because health questionnaires are really important. Maybe someone doesn't like going out at night. You need to ask why. Well, you know, at night, my night vision is really bad. You know, everything turns with spots when I go out at night. So I would prefer to do activities in the day. Are you okay with doing lunch instead of doing a dinner? That's the honesty and the openness, right? Can we do lunch instead? Can we do top golf in the daytime? You know? Can we go see a day movie? But that's about being open to conversation. And please stop mind reading. Stop mind reading. Stop expecting people to anticipate your needs and read your mind. When you start, you read your own mind. But when you're engaging with other people, men or women, men and women, and men and men, women and women, don't expect people to know what your needs are or your medical conditions. If you know you are allergic to seafood <coughs> and they say, let's go to dinner, where we're going is a good question. And if they say, oh, we're going to Red Lobster, you may want to say, unfortunately, I don't mind going but I won't be able to eat there because I'm allergic to seafood. And even though if I order something, I have found that they may cook in the same pot right. and you end up in an allergic reaction. <coughs> but that goes to being open mm -hmm. and stop hiding. And in your words, lying. Yep. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I'm coming, I'm coming. And then every time you cancel, you always cancel it. You have friends like that? Then you cancel on you every time or find something else to do, right? So what do I need to change about myself? Do I expect people to know what I'm thinking? Do I expect people to know my financial situation? <coughs> well, they know I got two kids that I'm taking for to Grand Bay. They know that, you know, I'm renting the house. They, no, people don't know your situation. They don't live in your house. Be open and have a conversation. Open and have a conversation. Mm -hmm. Am I that person that sit back and just judge. Mm -hmm. Am I just judging? I've been watching you. I ain't going yeah, nowhere with you because I see you. Yeah, I'm very good at that. A lot of people who do that. Mm -hmm. They judge everybody. Yes. And maybe it's something they need to change. Stop judging. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. But sometimes, uh, as far as relationship, uh, men and women, <coughs> as sometimes when a woman informed or tell the other person about themselves, what I want, what I expect, and what have you, it's not received well. You, you, you get the word, she's too aggressive, she's too, uh, <coughs> um, what's the word, independent, all of that. And that is, part of, that is part of the problem most women have. Most women, uh, let us say, makes more money yes. than a man, okay? She has more than a man. Men, more resources, and, yeah. and, and, and And they're like intimidated with some of the independent, quote unquote, women. Right. Yes. So that is the problem a lot of single women are faced with today. Okay, you got a triangle? And you're trying to put it in a square. <clears throat> if you pick up a man, I'm sorry, man. I'm just saying. If you pick up a man that 
that's intimidated by your money. Intimidated by the way you talk. Intimidated by your enthusiasm. Intimidated by just overall intimidated by you. He's a square and you're a triangle. That's why we don't have none. <laughs> You know, you like to say, forget it because yeah. you keep coming, you keep coming across these boxes. And you, know, you say, you know, what's yeah, the deal? Yes, I'm the, I, you know, I, again, I'm not a minister. <laughs> but me and Jesus become friends after breast cancer. <laughs> and I know he told the, his apostles one day, don't ask me where. I told him not a minister. He said, I need you to take this net. You've been fishing on this side of the ocean. Yes. And he said, I need you to take this net Move to the other side. And, and throw it on the other side of the boat. That's what the Okay? That's right. Uh -huh. Y'all keep throwing your net in the, wrong in the, in the same the wrong old pond. pond. Yep. See, I ain't gonna date no other type of race because you know they don't understand how we do things. But you're getting a bunch of squares. <laughs> You may want to try a different side of the boat. You know, and don't be sticking up your nose. Oh, he's dating that white woman. Oh, he, he, oh, she, oh he, she's dating a black man now. Oh, oh, he is Hispanic. He's Italian. He's whatever. Throw your net on the other side of the boat. If you keep popping up with these squares and you a triangle, and it goes in reverse, there are a lot of women who are very much into being what we call the ultra feminine, which is, honey, what do you want? You gotta make your plate, come over and have dinner, they're cooking, and they're a bunch of ultra, ultra square men who are like, I, I do that, my, my mama taught me how to cook. I know how to wash my clothes. I, and they're not looking for that type of woman. They're wow. looking for a very independent woman. But you can't be putting squares and triangles together. That's why you don't start with two people. You start with one. Mm. Who am I? I'm, I'm independent. I'm a triangle start to bottom all them sharp edges. Okay? <laughs> this is me. I have a bunch of sharp edges. You know? That's my fiance. I got sharp edges. Okay? He got sharp edges too. <laughs> he won't tell you. So you can't pick up a square. Throw your net on the other side of the boat. So you're right, a lot of people give up on relationships, but they need to get out of the pond that they're swimming in. They may want to go into the ocean. And there's always an ocean. Uh. So that's knowing the eye. If you can't swim or don't know where the ocean is, uh -huh. go find someone who does. That's right. Because there are many women out there who've gone through the Rolodex. And the many a man who's gone through all of that system. And they can tell you where the ocean is because they stay there. And they have websites too. And their websites and sites. <laughs> but you're not going in the ocean staying in your house, right? In your bedroom. Open, open, open to new things. Learn who you are. And if you're ready to engage with other people, whether sexual or non-sexual, evaluate yourself and match up. Make sure you're matching. You like movies, I like movies. I like concert, you like concert. I like dancing, you like dancing. I go to bed early, you go. Do not hook up with someone who goes to bed late, two in the morning, and you're an eight o'clock person. <laughs> you you eight o'clock, you turning in at eight o'clock. And they're like, let's go out. And you ready to go to bed. That's a mismatch. Yes, it is. Okay? Mm -hmm. That's a mismatch. Every day, they're up. He always on the street. He always out. That's who they are. But you want them to turn into at 8 o'clock in, in the evening. Mm. And they're just getting out of bed at midnight and at 12 o'clock. Match. So for this, for this time period, I'm leaving you with... The two. And this can be in your girlfriend 
relationship in your relatives, the people you're choosing to hang around with, how are you matching up? Because some people are morning person, yes. and some are night person. Night people. But you got it? Okay, all right. Questions, thoughts, before we go into three. Three, make sure you're ready for three, all right? Because uh, uh, I have a question. Can you relate back again to the square where that means for a person in the uh, triangle? Okay, so this is just an analogy of personality types. Okay. You know, and it just it's just a symbol that when you when you look at all the things that you found out you are, and you look at all the things that you find out that your partner is or your potential partner is, are there more things in common mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. than uncommon? Because it's okay to have five things that you have in common and two or three things you don't. That's okay. Yeah. It's not okay to have nine things that you don't have in common mm -hmm. and the only one thing you have in common is good sex, mm -hmm. okay? <laughs> Mm -hmm. that, that, that eventually maybe finances may become an issue the fact that they work out all the time and you don't mind being overweight you know and you like eating meat and they're vegan you know you gotta evaluate is there more of a match than a, a mismatch and that's real important yes and it evolves it might have been a match 10 years ago but now 20 years fast forward, it's not a match anymore. And if you have the conversation to say, hey, how can we match better? And it's rejected, it's not personal. Back to your question. It's not personal. This is the I that I found. This is who I am now. And it's not personal, it's just who I am. And there is a lot of problems in marriages because there is a reason behind it, is that love. Well, we're back to the peace. Especially nowadays, a lot of people want to get married because they want citizenship. They want the immigrants' papers. They want the, you know. But it is their match. They may marry because she mentioned immigration, but maybe he's cute, he's got skills, got not to use a hammer, animal lawnmower, <laughs> and, uh, and don't mind turning over the paycheck after working. <coughs> You know, for them papers, okay, let's go. <laughs> you never know. Again, just look for the mismatch, yeah. all right? Some people never get married before, and the first one they find, bam, I'm putting my hand on this one. Yeah, you know, that's gotta work through it. Yeah. So guys, thank you so much. If you have any questions,